Identifiers have also become a very uh, interesting uh, issue. We use domain names now regularly. They appear in URLs, URIs, and URNs, and so on. But they have the unfortunate character that a domain name is not permanent. Uh, it can disappear. It can be reassigned. Uh, there are all kinds of reasons why identifiers that are locked to domain names are not stable. Now, we do have URNs, we have URIs, that are intended to be more persistent. But this raises another very interesting question. What do these identifiers identify? And in general, uh, in the past anyway, uh, URLs, have, uh, and specifically domain names, have tended to identify a computer somewhere. There are other uh, more general notions that allow you to identify an object. The question is, what's an object? You know, is it a document? Is it a file? Is it an executable program? Is it a running process that's somewhere? Uh, so figuring out what we want objects to be uh, is part of the interesting uh, design challenge. How do I find the objects? What mechanisms do I use in order to discover them? Is it a directory system? Is it an indexing system? Is it a broadcast system that says, hi, where are you? I'm looking for this. Uh, are all objects unique? Uh, can I say, find me any instance of that object? Is there a way to express that? What, how do I interpret the object when I finally find out where it is? Do I need a computer to interpret it? Do I need a program to interpret it? Uh, how do I interact with it? Does it have a vocabulary? Does it have a command set? Uh, how do I know that it's still okay? How do I know that the object is as it was when it was put into the system to begin with? Uh, and how do I know where it came from? Some of these questions are really important because the objects that we often deal with are code that we download and run. And it's increasingly important for us to know where did it come from and has it been altered since it was originally made available. Uh, and until we solve those problems, we are at considerable risk. So authenticity has now become an increasingly important element in the vocabulary of the web uh, and, the, uh, and the Internet. So we have these notions of digital signatures thanks to public key cryptography, but the question is what value should we assign to them? To give you a trivial example, suppose that we uh, uh, engage in a dialogue on the net and we come to a conclusion about a contract. And we each digitally sign this contract using some public key capability. The question is, how will that contract be treated in the courts? You know, suppose that one of us fails to meet the uh, commitments that are in the contract and the other guy says, this isn't right, I'm suing you for breach of contract. In which jurisdictions will a digital signature be honored? The answer is I don't know, and I suspect a lot of us don't know. And the consequence of that is that we have to imbue the legal system, not just domestically but internationally, with notions that give weight and value uh, to digital signatures. But that now asks under what conditions were the signatures uh, or the certificates that support them issued, who had the authority to issue a certificate, and what does it mean, how carefully was it validated. Uh, generally speaking, authenticity of everything, including the physical components of the Internet. Am I really talking to the router I think I'm talking to? Am I really talking to the server I think I'm talking to? Uh, there are a lot of things in the net today which are essentially unauthenticated, and we simply trust them. I think over time we're going to have to build a better structure of trust into the system.